Good morning, Warriors. It's Thursday, October 31st. I'm Gracie. And I'm Grace. Today is National Caramel Apple Day and National Knock Knock Jokes Day. Don't forget, it's also Halloween. Did you know that trick-or-treating has existed, existed since medieval times? Young people dressed up in costumes and asked for food or money in exchange for songs, poems, or other tricks. Uh, today, the tradition has morphed into children to getting dressed up and asking for candy. That reminds me, I have a joke for you. Knock, knock. Who's there? Philip. Philip who? Fill up my bag with Halloween candy, please. Ha, ha, ha. I'm sure a lot of kids will be saying that tonight. We hope everyone has a fun and safe night. First practice for middle school wrestling is November 4th from 3.30 until 5.30. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders can come out for wrestling. Meet in the gym right after school. Bring shorts, t-shirt, tennis shoes. If you have wrestling shoes, bring them also. You must have a physical on file with Miss Butts before you can practice. Any 7th or 8th graders who would like to try out for a basketball team this year will need a, to attend tryouts on November 4th and November 5th. The girls will try out from 3.45 to 5.30 p.m. and the boys will try out from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. You must have a sports physical on file to attend tryouts. If you need a sports physical, see Miss Butts in the guidance office. It's time for the Read Your Way to the Big Game Contest. To enter, read six reading level appropriate books, complete a book list, and return it to your ELA reading teacher. The deadline for entry is November 1st. That's tomorrow. Attention sixth grade students, your second payment for the Atlanta field trip is $60 is due Friday, November 1st. Chaperone deposits of $75 are also due that day. No late payments will be accepted. 7th and 8th graders going on the D.C. field trip, your third payment of $75 and Chaperone's second payment of $95 is due on November 8th. As Dexter Cozen once said, shadows of a thousand years rise again unseen. Voices whisper in the trees. Tonight is Halloween. Please stay tuned after the news for a few short scary stories to help start the holiday off right. You, For full effect, you may want to turn off the lights. Enjoy. The Ghost at Home Last night, a friend rushed me out of the house to catch the opening act at a local bar's music night. After a few drinks, I realized my phone wasn't in my pocket. I checked the table, the bar, and the bathrooms. After no luck, I used my friend's phone to call it. After two rings, somebody answered in a low, raspy giggle and hung up. They didn't answer again. I eventually gave it up as lost and headed home. I found my phone laying right on my nightstand where I left it. The Chair When my sister Betsy and I were kids, our family lived for a while in a charming old farmhouse. We loved exploring its dusty corners and climbing the apple tree in the backyard. But our favorite thing was the ghost. We called our mother because she seemed so kind and nurturing. Some mornings, Betsy and I would, make, would wake up and on each of our nightstands, we'd find a cup that hadn't been there the night before. Mother had left them there, worried that we'd get thirsty during the night. She just wanted to take care of us. Among the home's original fur furnishings was an antique wooden chair, which we kept against the back wall of the living room. Whenever we were preoccupied watching TV or playing a game, Mother would inch the chair forward across the room toward us. Sometimes she'd manage to move it all the way to the center of the room. We always felt sad putting it back against the wall. Mother just wanted to be near us. Years later, long after we'd moved out, I found an old newspaper article about the farmhouse's original occupant, a widow. She'd murdered her two children by giving them each a cup of poisoned milk before bed. Then she hung herself. The article included a photo of the farmhouse living room with a woman's body hanging from the beam. Beneath her knocked over was that old wooden chair placed exactly in the center of the room. There's someone under the bed. I began tucking him into the bed, and he tells me, Daddy, check for monsters under my bed. I look underneath for his amusement and see him, another him, under the bed, staring back at me, quivering and whispering, Daddy, there's someone, somebody, on my bed. Nunchucks. When my daughter was two, I found her twirling paper towel tubes tied with twine in the air. I asked her what she was doing. She said she was practic practicing her nunchucks. I was very confused as she'd have no way of knowing what they were. I asked her 
what she meant, and she said that Adam had told her how to make them and showed her each night how to use them. She went on to say that Adam told her to practice because she may need to know how to defend herself someday. I almost freaked out, but asked her what Adam looked like. She said he was tall, blonde, and had blue eyes. She said, Mommy, you know how he looks? You know him? He died of a headache. I had to leave the room. You see? Four months before she was born, my tall, blonde, blue-eyed martial arts pro pro friend had died of a brain aneurysm at the age of 27. She has not spoken of him since that day, so I'm not sure if I scared her with my reaction or if she had completed her lessons. Happy Halloween from the Warriors news team. My name is Gracie. And my name is Grace. We hope you have a spooky Thursday.